Amen. So I learned how Solomon just, you know, we got to remember the, uh, God in the days of our youth. And it's so important, too. That's why I want to continue to have this fourth son and have more things for our youth. Because you got to think about this. When a child is young and tender, they, they don't, you know, they're willing to come to church, you know, and then the older they get, they can lose the desire to come. Come on, say amen. And when I was young, I really didn't want to go, but I had no choice. Amen. You know, but I thank God they made me because naturally you want to watch the other kids who don't go and everything. But the point is, the Bible said, remember now that I created the days I you train up a child when he's young, when he's old, he what? And I would train him up to know their God, know to have a heart for him. Amen? Because I know the youth be looking like they're going to live forever. We, we thought we were going to live forever. But, we, you know, we know we, we, we're getting older now and, and time passes on. Are you listening? Sometimes you might look back and you wish you was 20. And then you talk to some people. Hey, one lady we was talking to, uh, Caucasian, she said, I'm going to turn 30. And she got depressed. And I felt like when I was getting old, how many felt when you turned 30 like you was getting old? And I feel like when I'm, man, I'm 30. Then next it's 40. And then next, and then like Dwayne says to my social security, they were sending me my AARP when I was in my 40s. So wait a minute now, I ain't even turned 50. And I found out it was Cindy Strong's in her 20s, her 30s, trying to rush the thing. Now I'm saying, give it to me. Give me the discounts, okay. <laughs> but back then, I don't want no discount. Now give it up, give it up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now I'm going to read it. Look, look, look on the screen, Amplified, a 12 and 13 verse. Okay, here we go. Bible said, "What? Now let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God." And all, all has been heard. All has been heard. The end of the matter. Fear God, reverent and worship Him, knowing that He is. Say He is, and keep His commandments. For this is the whole of man, the full origin purpose of His creation. Say that to me. The full origin. Purpose of his creation. And then when you say the man, he's talking about I am the man. We, you, we are who he's, God's talking about. The object of God's providence, the root of character, the foundation of happiness, the adjustment of harmonious circumstances and conditions under the sun, and the whole duty of every man. So just know our purpose is to obey his commandments, is to honor him. And, and this is not to be dictatorship, but love for God because God is just, he's a father. He's our heavenly father. Yes. Say, so he's my heavenly father. Yes. And even though, you know, uh, the world is not all being subject to him, but one day every knee going to bow, every tongue going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So I'm just asking you to take it in your heart that my whole duty is to fear God, to reverence him, and one day I'm going to stand before him. Look at the 14th verse now. Let's read. And God shall bring, everybody read. For God shall bring every work into judgment, every secret thing. I'm just building a foundation here. Taking responsibility of your eternal soul because your soul, you just flesh you had to be dressed up. Most of the time, people, if you're not focusing on the spirit, you're catered into the flesh because you focus how good I look, what I got to do, where I got to go, and everything. But there's God has his control of that spirit, and he promised us a long life if we love him. And, and But yet, still, even though a long life is not going to be eternal life because our eternal life is with God. Come on, say amen. amen. All right, go to Matthew, the 16th chapter, just building up to something. Taking per, 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 possibility. And thank God for you. You know, you fear God, you reverence God, and you have a respect for Him. And, 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 and you're here to know that it's not just a tradition to come to church and to read my Bible, but I, I need it for my soul. I need it for my relationship with God. All right, Matthew, the 16th chapter. Because some people live like they ain't got a God to face. I saw a person with a, only a sign on their license plate, doing me. I'm doing me. And when you face God, doing you, you tell the Lord that when you better go into the lake, I'm, I was doing me. Matthew, the 16th chapter, 24th verse. Ain't nobody going to be saying that. Had no smart mouth because all the believers, when you, leave, when you stand before God, there's no doubters after this life. Everybody believes. Everybody want to worship. Everybody want to see him face to face. Everybody want to bow. Matthew, the 16th chapter. Let me get it right here now. 16th chapter, started the 24th verse. And again, thank God for your faithfulness. Thank God for you to hear your, your, your blessing to the church and blessing to my heart, First Lady's heart, and everything. So I'm just, I just want to say thank God for you. And I just want to focus on those who are faithful going forward. Matthew 16, chapter 24, let's read. Then Jesus said to the disciples, 
If any man will come after me, let him what? Let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. And that's so true. Even though God gives us the freedom, God gives me the freedom. But he still says, deny yourself. That means deny what flesh wants to do and follow me. Okay. For whosoever, read the 21st verse. For whosoever shall save his life shall lose it. And whosoever shall lose his life for my sake. I believe over in Mark, I believe it says, for my sake and the gospel's sake. And the gospel is a grace message. The gospel, we are saved to get the message out that God loves humanity, that he loves people. The grace message, that he want to be good to them even though they may be in sin, but God want to be good to them because he was good to us. That's why we got saved. Amen. God wouldn't mean to us to cause them to get saved. He was good to us, and we gave him our life. We gave him our heart. Amen? Amen. All right. So, again, whosoever shall save his life shall lose it when you build your life around yourself. Just not, and whosoever shall lose his life for my sake. In other words, you know, our life, we're supposed to live our life to please God. Then this 26 verse, I'm getting it, read. What shall a man profit if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Read again. And what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? I'm, I'm sorry, I apologize, I said it again, but I just want you to read to the end. What shall a, what is a, what, for what, what is a man that profiteth? If he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul. Say his, say his eternal soul. Amen. And what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? What will you give in exchange for eternal life with God? A life with Christ. 27 verse read. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of the Father with his angels. Then shall he what do what? The works. To the works on earth. The works you have done for the kingdom. Amen. So we've heard that scripture many times. What does it profit to gain the whole world and lose your soul? You're just doing all, trying to please yourself. But the Bible says in one scripture, all souls belong to God. So my soul belongs to God. Even though it belongs to God, and my body belongs to God, my spirit belongs to God, if you're not your own, you're bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and your spirit, still God gives us a choice. He's not going to make you. He's the owner of your soul. But, we know, but still in the midst of it, that at the end of this life, is going back to God. He would already said, body going to the dust, spirit coming back to me. Come on, say amen. amen. Don't go to sleep on me. Say, say body, body going back to the dust, back. returning back to the dust, amen. spirit returning to God. That, that, that eternal state that, that's in you, that soul, that spirit that's going to live forever is going to return back to God. And that's the reality of life as a believer that we understand the truth that God is a spirit and he connects with the eternal spirit. Man connects with the flesh. How can the flesh look? And how can the flesh do this? And how much money they can make? I told you years ago, I heard a man sell on television. He, had this, he owned the island. And somebody was uh, interviewing him. He had all the women he wanted, all the money, all the cars, all whatever. And they says, sir, what, is, what else would you like in life? He said, to live forever. Two weeks later, he died. It sounded like the rich man who built those bigger barns. And the Lord says, you know, he, this night thy soul is acquired of thee. So, we, you know, just the point is, is just uh, God owns everything. And, and I just I look at the scriptures that we're here for his pleasure. We're here to honor him. And he wants you happy. Because yes. he wants you happy. But he knows he's your life, your breath, your health. You know, we are the, we are, uh, the, the clay, he's the potter. Are you listening? And so uh, we, God just wants reverence. And he just wants to enjoy life with us. You know, when you go on a trip, God just wants to enjoy it with you that we have the God kind of like working in us. Amen? And, I, and even I'm teaching this word, I know many of you here today, you, you reverence God, you respect God, you feel God, you know he's your life, you know he's your breath, you acknowledge him when you wake up in the morning, are you listening? Amen. And you honor him for who he is and that you know he's a person and he wants to be honored, he has feelings too, and he wants to be worshiped and glorified. Amen. All right. Uh, now let's go over to, let me see, make sure, I'm gonna go to Luke now to the 12th chapter now. I'm just going to get to something here. But I just want you to understand that our life is, uh, we have a soul, we have a spirit, and that's what's going to live forever. And I can just say this as we move along, we want to do all we can to add to our eternal soul and spirit's growth. So adding to my eternal soul and spirit that's going to live forever. I have to do my part in helping my eternal the inner man that's going to live forever to grow. And, and did I read the Bible?